Good morning and welcome to the Wednesday morning uh, prayer time and devotional here at Faith Presbyterian Church. If you have your Bibles, uh, go to Revelation chapter 16 and I'm going to read verses 1 to 11. Revelation chapter 16 verses 1 to 11. And, and while you're looking for that, uh, just as a, just let, let's, let's do some context uh, study here. Remember, uh, we're still in the context of the revealing of these two beasts. You remember the uh, beast number one represents um, human authority, human institutions throughout all time, throughout all of, of, of human history, throughout uh, all of, of church history, really, um, leading up to the return of Jesus. Okay, so it's not predicting uh, uh, what's going to happen in in my future or your future, or uh, it's not really predicting um, what's going to happen within the immediate future of John's readers, what it is doing is describing the nature of things leading up to the return of Jesus. And, and it's, a, it's a, the reason why things are the way that they are is because sin exists in, in this world. And so you're going to have human authorities um, that are going to be uh, in opposition to the things of God. And so therefore, beast number two represents uh, humans um, that uh, exist those human authorities that that, uh, sit, that uh, sit in the seats of power within those human authorities, no matter whether the Roman Empire in John's day um, or, or, or whether um, uh, communism in our day and time, regardless, uh, that the human authority and humans who wield that authority will always be in opposition to God. And, and, and notice that, that uh, preceding um, the two beasts, we see that it is Satan who is using these two beasts as his means through which uh, he will attempt to persecute the church or, or destroy um, God's people. But at the same time, God's people are not without vindication here on planet Earth. Or um, maybe a better way to say that would be uh, the wrath of God will fall on uh, both human authorities, human institutions, and really all of humanity as a result of their open rebellion against God, as a result of their uh, rebellious opposition to God and to God's people, i.e. the church. And so that, that brings us to Revelation chapter 16. So Revelation, Revelation chapter 16 is um, another way to see the uh, seven trumpets. Remember the seven trumpet judgments that we saw earlier in the book of Revelation? Well, it, it, the seven trumpet judgments are recapitulated in these seven bowls. The, the seven bowls don't come after the seven trumpet judgment. The seven bowls are the seven trumpet judgment. But the seven, the seven bowl judgment visions here that John receives are, um, are, are a uh, intensification of what we see in the seven trumpets. R remember, each vision John sees, he's seeing the same events happening, the same event happening in a recapitulated manner in these visions. And, and each time it's recapitulated, it's, it's intensified. It, it's more uh, distinct, more detailed, a lot more vivid. And that's what we hear, that's what we see here in Revelation chapter 16. And what we're gonna see is um, uh, Revelation chapter 16, we're going to look at verses 1 to 11, and what we're going to see, according to my notes here, that's what I'm looking down, I wrote a few notes here, um, that God is punishing, or God will punish, the ungodly during that period of time leading up to the return of Jesus, and, and what he's doing is he's depriving them of earthly security because of their persecution of the church and their opposition to God, and because of their idolatry. Um, I had a, a my 11-year-old daughter, Avery, last night, we were sitting on the back deck talking after dinner and just hanging out. And she, there was a, there was a long pause, long quiet pause. And she looked at me and she said, Dad, does, does God, God's going to punish people after Jesus returned for not believing the gospel? I said, yes. She said, does, does God punish people now, like before they die? And we had a long conversation about, uh, yeah, God's wrath is being revealed even now, um, uh, all around us, uh, on unbelievers, um, in, in certain ways. And so we had to have that long, difficult conversation. And she was just blown away by, 
uh, by, by that. Um, and then we had to turn the, then we turned the conversation over to yet God's love is also revealed. And how's God's love revealed? And we talked about how God's love and God's wrath is revealed uh, most explicitly in the cross of Jesus Christ. Um, that uh, that God's love is, uh, is 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 fully displayed and fully expressed. Um, uh, and, and his love is, is so radical and so extreme and so wonderfully severe that as Christians, we grab onto God's love uh, that's seen at the cross of Jesus Christ. So no matter, no matter what happens in this world, no matter what kind of persecution or suffering we experience in this world, we are to never let go of the love of God in the person and work of his son, uh, Jesus Christ, and, and because God never lets go of us. Uh, because his love is a securing love, it's an assuring love, it's a confirming love. And so we had a wonderful conversation about that last night. And so I want you to remember that now, as, as we read uh, Revelation 16, verses 1 to 11. Remember, and we, we read these horrific things that are, that are happening. Remember that, that this is vivid, figurative, detailed language um, about what, about how God is pouring out his wrath uh, upon this, the, the, the sinful rebellion of, of, the un, of, of the unbelieving world leading up to the return of Jesus. And Christians, we Christians, we have to live in the midst of this, um, of, of, of God's punishment on, on, on unbelievers and, on, and God's punishment on, 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 on their sin. And we have to live in the midst of it. And as, as we are living in the midst of it, we grab hold of God's affirming uh Confirming, assuring, beautiful, wonderful, radical, severe, awesome love that can be found in Christ Jesus. Um, and therein lies God's grace for those who hope in, in the Lord. And so let's look at Revelation chapter 16, verse 1. We read uh, John, uh, he's hearing a voice. Then I heard a loud voice from the temple telling the seven angels, Go and pour out on the earth seven bowls of the wrath of God. Now, again, just the, the, the number seven, seven angels, seven bowls, means this is uh, God's wrath in uh, God's wrath in its wholeness. Uh, God is uh, pouring out His punishment upon unbelievers in completeness. But yet, this is before the return of Jesus. Um, so the first angel went out and poured out his bowl on the earth, and harmful and painful sores came upon the people who bore the mark of the beast and worshipped its image. The second angel poured out his bowl into the sea, and it became like the blood of a corpse, and every living thing died that was in the sea. The third angel poured out his bowl into the rivers and the springs of water, and they became blood. And I heard the angel in charge of the water say, Just are you, O holy one, who is and who was, for you brought these judgments, for they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and you have given them blood to drink. It is what they deserve. And I heard the, I heard, and I heard the altar saying, Yes, Lord God, the Almighty, true and just are your judgments. The fourth angel poured out his bowl in the sun, and it was allowed to scorch people with fire. They were scorched by the fierce heat, and they cursed the name of God who had power over these plagues. They did not repent and give glory and give him glory. The fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast, and its kingdom was plunged into darkness. People gnawed their tongues in anguish and cursed the God of heaven for their pain and sores. They did not repent of their deeds. I mean, so what we're seeing here is, is several things. First of all, notice um, uh, God's uh, wrath poured out on creation itself. Um, that, that, uh, that creation itself is putting on display um, the, the God's wrath on the on brokenness and sin in this world. I mean, think about it. I mean, you know, it's, I mean, whether, you, I don't want to, well, I'll go, I'll go there. Just, just be patient with me. Just bear with me for a second. Um, you notice that the, the, the pollution is rampant in our in, in, in our environment. Um, the trash, uh, I mean, showing up in, in, in seawater. I mean, rivers getting polluted. I mean, you know, um, the the uh, whether you believe in stuff or not. I mean, just use an example: the, the rising temperature of the oceans. I mean, stuff like that. I mean, this is um, uh, God allowing His punishment and, and judgment to be poured out. On creation as a result of our sin and our rebellion against God uh, to not um, be care care caretakers of creation proper caretakers of creation now I'm not talking about like you know um, 
thing that creation is just as important as humanity and, and all the stuff you hear out there. But I'm talking about Genesis one to two type of caretaking, where where where, where we are uh, to take care of God's creation, see it for the beauty that it is. But but, but we see all around us that we that we're not. Um, and so as a result, you see God's punishment being poured out on on creation. You also see uh, God's punishment being poured out on on those who have who have uh, who have had the mark of the beast placed on, the for, on their forehead. Those who do not believe in the gospel. Those um, who who uh, ha are loyal to, uh, to to, uh, to human institutions, loyal to humanity, um, and thus worship humanity, worship human institutions, whether wittingly or unwittingly. Um, we see in chapter 16 that God's punishment is being poured out on them as well um, through many different ways. I mean, uh, through disease, uh, through war, through famine. And this is this is going to be a common theme. I'm speaking in generalities because this is going to be a common theme that we see throughout all these judgments, all these sevenfold judgments that are poured out on creation and on unbelieving humanity. Um, this, this is a result of of their rebellion against God. This is a result of their um, of their opposition toward the things of God and 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 the gospel. And and so um, we as Christians are living in the midst of it. Uh, and, and living in the midst of it, uh, living in the results of it, we are to proclaim the good news of those who are suffering. Uh, and, and, and the sad thing is, is many unbelievers don't see it as suffering. They don't see it as punishment. They see it as something that they can fix, that, that, the, that the problem uh, in humanity, the problem in creation can be found with the human solution. But, but it cannot. It cannot be found with the human solution. The problem with humanity, the problem that we see in creation can only be found in a gospel solution or, or in, the, or, or in the, the message of the gospel. And so we as the church, we need to be about the business, be about the work, of living out the gospel, proclaiming the gospel in all arenas, uh, in the hopes that many people will come to faith in Jesus Christ. And once the once all the elect come to faith in Jesus Christ, then Jesus will return and rescue not just humanity. We, let's, let us not forget that, that the redemption that will be um, expressed, displayed, and carried out at the return of Jesus is not just redemption of humanity, it's also redemption of creation. Do not forget the, the words of the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 8, where we're told that even creation, even the earth, even the whole universe groans inwardly, awaiting its own redemption. Because it is subjected um, to uh, the, the curse of sin, as humanity is subjected to the curse of sin. And so the only solution to this curse is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so we must be about the business of pre preaching the gospel, living the gospel, uh, loving people in the gospel. Um, so I, I think that's what that's the takeaway of Revelation chapter 16 as we dive into these seven bold judgments. Um, is that uh, is, is that we are to be about the work of the gospel in the midst of of, uh, of God working His punishment upon those and upon creation uh, because of because of, because of the sin, death, and brokenness in this world. So I want to encourage you to today to be the gospel to people you come in contact with. Be the gospel in your heart. Be the gospel in your mind. Um, uh, be the gospel for the sake of the world. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for the goodness of the gospel of your son, Jesus Christ. Father, I pray that we that we don't get distracted by the horrific things we see in this world um, that may be a result of your punishment and wrath on unbelievers, but we hold fast to the good news of your son, Jesus Christ. Um, that is not for us to condemn, and it's not for us to punish, it is for us to love. And the best way we can love is to share Jesus with everyone we come in contact with. And I pray that you give us the power, the grace, the love, um, the desire necessary to share Jesus. And I always seem to ask your son's precious name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us this morning. I hope the, the Lord uh, walks with you this day. And, um, that you are empowered to be the gospel with, with everyone you come in contact with. If you have any questions uh, about any of this stuff uh, that we're going over in Revelation, please email me, text me, or call me. I know these videos are, are brief, and there, there's a lot of details that we're just kind of like uh, flying over. Uh, I'd love to teach a more detailed class on this, but um, but uh, but but uh, email me, text me, or call me if you need anything. And, but in the meantime, I, I hope to see you soon. God bless.